everybody, welcome back. Uh, just a quick update on the Bismarck build today. Uh, and specifically, uh, picking up on the problem that I identified a couple of episodes ago with the ship's boats. Uh, now I'm building the Bismarck as she was when she left Grimstad Fjord on the way out to the Atlantic, to the North Atlantic, uh, in May 1941. And at that stage, a lot of changes had been made to the complement of ship's boats. So that uh, when she left Grimstad Fjord, uh, the boats on board were four transportation boats. This is one of them, which I built uh, much earlier on in the series. So there are four of those on the aft aircraft hangars. Uh, there was one Admiral's Barge, the early style of Admiral's Barge, which is uh, the one that I built in the last episode, this one. That goes on the uh, starboard forward aircraft hangar roof. To build the ship as she left Grimstad Fjord, we also need two 9 metre pinnaces and one 7 metre, well nearly 8 metre, 7.7 .7 metre motor yawl. The problem is that in the trumpeter kit, we only get one more moulding, which is this one. And as I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, that scales out at 9 metres. So it's meant to represent one of the two motor pinnaces, but we get one moulding in the kit. So I'm going to have to make uh, something from that hull. Fortunately, in the Pontos set, we get two sets of photo etch for this part. So this is the deck for this particular boat. But we get two sets of brass. So what I need to do is to make another hull. And with the photo etch, we'll then be able to build the two 9 meter pinnaces. The major problem uh, with the kit is that it doesn't provide the 7.7 .7 meter yawl and there are other plans in process to try and rectify that fault. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that uh, one of our viewers, Ron in the Netherlands, is doing some great work with the plans in the uh, anatomy of the ship book and is attempting to come up with a solution to the missing yawl. Uh, but what I want to do today is just to try and recreate this hull so that we can finish off the two pinnaces. So that's what I need to reproduce. And I'll be doing that in resin. So I'm going to attempt to cast two of these hulls in resin. The reason that I'm going to cast two is that I might end up using this plastic uh, hull to shorten it to 7.7 .7 metres and try to recreate the yawl from that if it's not possible for Ron to uh, come up with uh, another solution. So I'm just saving that hull as uh, an insurance policy really. But uh, I want to get the two resin replacements done first of all, see if we can get that done and then uh, at least that's the motor pinnaces sorted out. Just to go back a bit, the puzzle with the Pontos uh, set is that they provide all these resin cutters uh, which I don't need for the ship as I'm uh, building it but it's just a puzzle why they didn't provide the uh, hull for the yawl and some photo etch so uh, that's all a bit strange really it's a shame as well so if anybody needs any resin cutters uh, just give me a shout okay to make the hull or to cast it, I'm going to be using a silicon rubber and uh, resin casting kit. This is the first part of it to make the rubber mould. And it consists of this silicon with a catalyst or activator. And you can see that the activator is coloured. That just makes sure that we're able to uh, mix the preparation properly uh, so that uh, the silicon will set hard in the mould. So that's the first thing that we're going to be using. Then we've got again a two part uh, mix for the resin itself. We've got the resin and another activator. Now as we all know those of us that use resin products when we're sanding it we've got to be very careful it's quite a toxic product. 
Uh, so when I'm mixing this, eventually, uh, I'll be using a mask and gloves just to make sure that I don't get any on my skin. And the fumes from this isocyanite, which is the activator, uh, I, can, I don't breathe that in. So, uh, so it's a process where you've got to be fairly careful and conscious of the product that you're using. Now I've already had a bit of a practice using this uh, resin. It's not a process that I've ever done before. And it does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but I've been working on my HK 132 scale Lancaster and I've done these parts for the cockpit area. So I've got some parachute packs, uh, some oxygen bottles here and the navigator's uh, scale that goes on the desk. So the uh, quality of this resin is really nice. It's really smooth, picks up all the detail of the part that you're wanting to mould. And... Um, Hopefully we'll get a good result and pick up all the uh, detail and moulding on the trumpeter hull that we're trying to reproduce. So uh, there are three ways, three main ways that I've picked up to uh, cast resin. Uh, the most simple one is to uh, place the part that you're trying to reproduce on the base of the mould. In this case I'm just using this cup from a tool kit. It's about 50 millilitres. And what you would do is lay the part on the base and it's best just to tack it down with some PVA so that it doesn't float in the uh, silicon. And then pour the silicon over the top of it. When you remove the silicon once it's set, you get a negative impression of the part on the underside of the silicon which you can just fill with the resin and you recreate the part which is what I've done with this. The second method is just to lay the part into the silicon before it's set and that's how I did these parachute packs. So you just lay them in at a slight angle. I actually did them upside down like that. So you lay them in the surface and just below the surface. Once the silicon's set you then cut a hole or a slice into the mould and you can then open it up like a flap and pour the resin in and that's how I did these parachute packs as I say. The final method is to use a two-part uh, mould and that's where you would partially fill the container, lay the part on top of it so that sort of half of it is in the silicon and then when that's set, you can then put a release agent onto that first moulding and pour some more silicon on top. And then once everything's set, you can just pull the two parts of the mould apart and uh, you can then cast the uh, resin into it. But for that process, you do need the release agent and I don't happen to have any at the moment. So I'm going to attempt to cast this hull uh, using the method where I just lay it be below the surface and slice the top of the mould to uh, release the part later on. To do that, I'm going to first of all attach the uh, hull to a piece of sprue so that I can manoeuvre it into the correct position in the mould. So uh, we'll kick off doing that. So with our master ready, I'll mix the silicon now in this container. One of these uh, boxes holds 50 millilitres, so we don't want to mix much more than that.
So that's just about 50 millilitres in there and we need to add 10% of this silicon catalyst which as you can see is uh, coloured and that's so that you can check that you've mixed it thoroughly in the pot. So I need about 5 mils of the catalyst. And, and then we just stir the catalyst into the silicon so you just want to stir this gently you don't want to get any air into it obviously there's uh, a risk that that will create bubbles in the uh, actual casting piece although the bubbles will tend to flow out and rise to the surface it's just as well to uh, not over whisk it obviously air is our enemy when it comes to casting resin So this mixture should just about fill this container. We've got plenty of time uh, with this silicon. It takes nearly a day to set, so it's not as if it's going to go off straight away on you. As I said, the resin is a different matter. You've got to act and work very quickly with the resin when we come to do that. As you can see, this is a messy process when you're as clumsy as I am with it. You can see that there's uh, one or two air bubbles that are rising to the surface. So just let them settle out. So what I want to aim for here is to get the uh, hull just at a slight angle. We don't want it on its side because you might trap air uh, underneath on uh, this side so just at an angle and that will allow when we come to it it will allow the resin to flow nice and easily into the mould And I'm aiming uh, to have this side of the top of the hull just underneath the silicon. And that's where I'll cut the silicon to open the mould up later on. So you can just see the side of the hull just on the surface there. It needs to be a little bit further down than that, otherwise we'll get a partial moulding. The part does want to float, so we'll try and fix it into position. So I think uh, that's about in the right position. The side of the hull is just below the surface. As I said, I think the two-part method would probably be more advisable for this particular part. 
So uh, don't take this as gospel by any means. Um, I'm only just starting out with this process and I'm learning as I go along. But there are some really good videos on YouTube uh, by people much more expert than I am. So if you're interested in uh, casting your own pieces, you'd probably be better advised looking at those rather than what I'm doing. So we leave that alone, don't move it now for 24 hours and then hopefully we'll come back and find ourselves with a set silicone mould tomorrow. So we're 24 hours later and the silicon has set. So what I need to do now is to try and release it from the container which isn't always the easiest thing to do. Okay, so there we are. We've got the mould for our hull. It's a little bit uh, prominent here. We might just lose a little bit of the side of the hull, but uh, we'll see how we go with it. Now, what I want to do now is release the plastic from the mould. So you can see there we've got the open mould and we've got to get the resin into that. Now there are a number of air bubbles down at the bottom. And what that will do is it will give us a slightly rough surface uh, on the hull. So we'll just have to hope that that's not too bad and we can clean it up. So what I'm going to do now is uh, mix some resin up. I'm going to have to put some gloves on and my respirator. So we're not going to be doing a lot of talking, but we need that 50 50 mix and try and get some resin into this mold. So with this I'm just going to get a couple of minutes to uh, mix the uh, resin with the catalyst before it starts going off so you've got to act fairly quickly.
So the resin mixture will warm up and it will start to uh, go cloudy. So uh, we'll let it do its work and uh, let's see if we can get a clean mould. Okay, so that appears to have set. And the tricky thing is now to get this out without breaking it. I've had two failed attempts already. And the problem's been that this plug, which goes all the way down, it's the old sprue that I attached to the boat. Obviously that's full of resin now. And where it's joined to the uh, bottom of the boat, it's snapping the bottom of the boat to pieces. At least it did on my first two attempts. So I'm going to try to get this out without breaking it. We'll know that uh, if you use resin, you'll be very aware that it's a very brittle substance. So it's very easy to break. And the shell of this boat is very thin. This resin's had about an hour. The instructions uh, say that it should cure between 30 and 60 minutes. So I've left it uh, the longer period just to make sure that it's absolutely cured. Going down to try and break that plug off so there's less of it to come out. Doing this has made me appreciate the manufacturers of commercial resin parts and why resin's so expensive. I've got the faults on the underside where I pointed out those uh, air bubbles so the resin's gone into them uh, and given us excess material but at least there are no holes in it so those imperfections can be filed off Okay, so uh, that's come out pretty well. I'm fairly happy with that. It's a bit rough in places. Needs a little bit more work on it. But I think uh, once we get uh, a bit more filler on that in one or two places, just to tidy it up, get the deck on and uh, some Mr. Surfacer, we should have a couple of fairly presentable 9 meter pinnaces. So uh, I'll mould the second hull, as I said I'm going to do two. I'll mould the second hull uh, and get the rest of the photo etch done on them. I won't do that on camera because it's uh, just a repetition really of the other boats. There's nothing much different to these. But uh, once they're done I'll show you what they look like and bring you an update in the next episode. So... Uh, that's a new skill, not quite learned yet, but started at least. And hopefully it'll stand me in good stead in the future for making parts like this. So, uh, as I said, just a short video, just a quick update on the Bismarck. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to join me for the next one. 
So until then, everybody, look after yourselves and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>